now go. I'm a lead aquarist here at the Virginia Living Museum, and I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of feedings today. We're going to be feeding our Chesapeake Bay Aquarium, as well as one of our quarantine tanks. Um, so if you come on over here and take a look, I'm going to show you what we're going to be feeding our animals today. We've got a couple of different things laid out for them. Um, we have some speckled sea trout right here. Uh, this is a cross-section of a sardine some flounder meat, which many of you will be uh, very familiar with in your own house, some shrimp, another very tasty thing, scallops, clam strips, and oysters. So all of this is going to go into this big bunch of food here that's going to feed our Chesapeake Bay Aquarium. So I'm going to close that up and then I also have a small container of chopped oysters for our quarantine tank today as well as a little fox toy enrichment item for them. So let's head on over there and we're gonna start with the quarantine tank so I can show you guys some enrichment. So these are animals that we have in our collection that are not currently on display. So today you're getting a nice little behind the scenes look at some of our animals. And the fish that we have in this tank currently are called orange file fish. So even though they are not orange in color, they are called the orange file fish. And you'll notice they have a very odd shape. Uh, this shape actually helps them camouflage in the wild. Naturally, they would be found in amongst things like grasses or sargassum algae out in the ocean. Um, where they would be kind of pressed up against that material so that they could hide. And their irregular body shape and coloration and ability to change color actually help them blend in better with their surroundings. So I am going to give them some of this food in this enrichment item. So I'm going to stuff these little pieces of oyster into this toy. And then they're gonna have a fun time pulling this food out of here. Now enrichment is a term uh, that some of you may be familiar with now. And it means an uh, activity or an item that encourages species-specific behavior. And what that means is that uh, it encourages behaviors that these animals would naturally perform in the wild. So right now, these guys are picking at this toy, much like they would do with any bit of floating food or any bits of um, encrusted animals like barnacles or, or mussels or clams. They would eat those kinds of things and pull them off of the rocks, and they would also crunch down on bits of algae and bits of coral and things like that. So they are currently kind of pecking at that toy and eating the pieces that fall out. And I personally love this toy because it's very cute, but they really just see it as something that has their food. They are very attracted to it. All right, so now that we have finished our quarantine enrichment and feeding, we are going to head on up above our Chesapeake Bay Aquarium so that you guys can see uh, what it looks like from up top. All right, follow me. Look. There she goes. These are 
very formidable predators, but they are not something that we as humans need to worry about in the wild. They're not an aggressive species. Most sharks are not very aggressive towards people. They're more curious, and most shark bites just happen because the shark is interested in what you might be. They're not familiar with your body shape or whatever, uh, and they'll take a little nibble, but these ones you really don't need uh, to worry about them being aggressive towards people. So if you see them out in the wild, just give them a good amount of distance. And if you catch one on your line when you're fishing, as tends to happen sometimes, the best thing to do is just unhook them and throw them right back into the water. I'm going to give them one more piece. Britt, you have a question. How big are the sharks? How big are the sharks? So it's a little difficult to measure them when they are inside the tank, but they are about three to four feet each. So one is a little bit bigger than the other. Um, but they are both about the same size now. They started off a little bit different sizes, but they catch up quickly when they get access to very good nutritious food. All right, so next will be our broadcast feeding, which will be this large bunch of food here. So I'm gonna come up to the front, and I will be feeding along this long strip here, trying to ensure that all of our fish get access to this food. looking at the above catwalk of our big tank. This tank is our Chesapeake Bay Aquarium as Britt's been showcasing you a feeding. It's 30,000 gallons salt water. Here's our air tanks for when we dive, for our hookah line dive. Some filtration and a ladder to get in and then the front of the tank. So we can actually walk over the top of the tank here as you can see. So we can actively see who's getting what kind of food and so forth. There we go. So where Britt fed the sharks earlier is our, actually our dive platform. I know it's a little dark, but we don't have lights up here. That's our dive platform for where we get in every week to dive. There's the sharks yet again. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I guess we'll cut it off and see you again at the next uh oh how often do we clean the tanks well every tank gets a certain water change every week 
a certain percentage water change, and we dive in this tank once a week. Um, so every, every tank gets fed, or gets cleaned every week. Here, someone's asking, what do they eat? Uh, I guess you turned in a little late. Britt showcased some of the feed items that we had. Um, for this particular tank, we had a smorgasbord of shrimp and scallops, different fish items that are all saltwater uh, diet, flounder, capelin, herring, sardines, whatever we have available. And we try to uh, mimic their natural feeding. And by doing that, we, we kind of vary their diet as much as possible. Because in the wild, they're gonna be opportunistic feeders and eat pretty much what they can get a hold of. Um, when and why do we dive? Ordinarily, when we're open, we dive every Thursday afternoon at three o'clock for the public to watch. And we dive ordinarily to clean the tank, clean the glass, um, clean the rock work, um, and even uh, do some uh, additional enrichment with some of the animals like the black drum, uh, for, for example, um, are really good at eating out of your hand and so forth. Um, how do the fish and sharks react to divers? They don't really acknowledge us except that they expect us to have food and feed them. So the spade fish, for example, um, like to chew on your hair because they <laughs> assume it's food. They are chewing on your gloves because they want to take food from you, but you don't have food, so then they kind of give up and go on their own business uh, and so forth. Um, how did, oh, I already saw that one. How many fish live in the tank? We have about uh, 10 to 12 species in this tank. I can list them off. We have uh, permit, uh, red drum, black drum, um, two of the sandbar sharks, triple tails, um, one look down, and the spade fish. I heard that permit. Uh, and there's only a handful of, uh, oh, and a gag grouper. And there's only a handful of the, um, of each species in the tank. Um, they've been here a long time, and as they start to get either uh, too much for the tank or start to get too large, they will be released into the wild. Um, if there's no other questions... I, I'd like to say just one thing. Uh, please remember, this is Judy from Marketing, just remember to log on and look at all of our natural education that we're providing, uh, both and all social media platforms, not only the Facebook Live, but also on Twitter and Instagram and our YouTube. And as always, you can always go to our website at theblm.org, T-H-E-V-L-M.org, for all of the latest information on what's happening here. We wish you all to stay safe and well. And until next time, we'll continue to bring you little glimpses of the Virginia Living Museum. Thank you for watching.